A climate crisis, widespread illness, the threat of nuclear war. It certainly seems like we might be approaching the end of times. This sense of impending disaster is not a new phenomenon, though. Many cultures throughout human history have predicted the doom and gloom of apocalypse. And while some have been proven wrong, others could be omens for things to come. Should we be worried? Let's look at seven civilizations that predicted the end of the world. The Hopi Let's start out in the Americas. Many indigenous cultures in both North America and Mesoamerica believed the world would end. Their apocalypse narratives were typically cyclical, though, meaning that the destruction of the world would lead to a new one, part of a cycle of creation and destruction that has been going on for millennia and will continue far into the future. That doesn't mean we humans will be around for the new worlds, however. According to the Hopi, an ancient Native American tribe who have lived in what's now Arizona for more than 2,000 years. We are currently living in the fourth world. In each of the three previous worlds, humans effectively went crazy, destroying each other and the planet through war and ruinous technology. Towards the end of each world, a gateway or portal is said to appear called a Sipapu, which leads a select few on into the next incarnation of Earth. Representations of the Sipapu are dug in the ground in Hopi ceremonial spaces called Kivas, where they would perform rites and rituals as part of their worship. Hopi elders today believe that we are on the verge of entering the fifth world, with the destruction of the fourth resulting from our lack of respect for the planet. Sounds awfully familiar. The Aztecs In fact, there are a few cultures in the Americas that share this fifth world mythology. The Aztecs were another. Their story was called the Five Sons. The first world began with a god Omitiatl, who emerged from the void of the universe and being both male and female, birthed four children. Quetzalcoatl, Huitzilopochtli, Zipetotec, and Tezcalipoca. These gods then created the first world, and people on it were giants. But then, Quetzalcoatl became jealous of his brother Tezcalipoca, who was the sun god and knocked him out of the sky. And angry, Tezcalipoca responded by having all people on Earth eaten by jaguars. The second world didn't go too well either. Quetzalcoatl became the new sun and created normal-sized humans. These humans eventually became less civilized, though, and forgot to honor the gods as much as Tezcalipoca would have liked. So, he turned them into monkeys. Quetzalcoatl didn't like this, so he sent a hurricane to drown all the monkeys and end that world. For the third try, the gods decided to make the rain god Talalak the new sun. But then, Tezcalipoca seduced Talalak's wife. An upset Talalak created a severe drought, and all the people praying to him for rain made him angry. So he instead rained fire, destroying everything except the birds, which managed to fly away. In the fourth iteration of the world, Talalak's new wife, Chalchiutlakue, became the sun. But Tezcalipoca upset her, and she ended up crying blood for 52 years. Only the fish survived this time. Which brings us to the fifth world. The Aztecs believed they were living through the fifth and final sun, embodied as the god Huitzilopochtli. To give this final son the strength to fend off the apocalyptically-minded Tezcalipoca, the Aztecs practiced human sacrifice on a scale perhaps unrivaled in history, all to make sure the sun would continue to rise and fend off the fifth and final apocalypse. But all that human sacrifice didn't stop the Spanish from coming in the 1500s, an apocalyptic event that effectively ended the fifth world for the Aztecs. The Mayans we can't leave the Americas without addressing one of the most famous doomsday prediction of modern times, the Mayan prediction that the world would end on December 21, 2012. The Mayans were astute astronomers and used some of the most accurate calendars in the world. They actually had three different calendars. Two of them worked together simultaneously. These two were called the Hab and Tezolkin. The Hab was a civil calendar consisting of 365 days divided into 18 months of 20 days each. And the Tzalkin was a sacred calendar consisting of 260 days divided into three groups of months, each month divided into 20 days. The two combined to form the calendar round. It was an incredibly accurate system, but it couldn't account for dates farther than 52 years into the future. So the calendar round would repeat every 52 years. To measure farther backwards and forwards in time, the Mayans used what is called the Long Count Calendar. The beginning date for this calendar was August 11, 3114 BC, and the end date was December 21, 2012. 
This 5,126 year period was divided into 13 segments called Baktuns of 144,000 days each. Obviously, the world didn't end in 2012, but did the Mayans think it would? Maybe not. There is actually no evidence that the Mayans believed the end of their calendar meant the end of the world. The calendar was most likely just a way for them to measure the greatest span of time as accurately as possible. And that accuracy reached its limit on December 21st, 2012. To the Mayans, the end of their calendar may have simply represented the start of a new cycle. The Hindu Yugas Our next cyclical type of apocalypse story took place half a world away. Hinduism has been the central religion for civilizations throughout India for thousands of years. Great and powerful dynasties like the Guptas, Mauryans, and the Cholas all worship the pantheon of Hindu gods, praying to and building temples for deities like Shiva, Vishnu, and Krishna. But Hinduism also predicts an apocalypse. According to the Puranas, a set of ancient Hindu texts, all of creation goes through four stages called Yugas. They are the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and the Kali Yuga. These four yugas make up one cycle, or Maha Yuga, which supposedly lasts about 4.3 million years. We're currently in the fourth and final yuga of the cycle, the Kali Yuga. Unfortunately, over the course of each yuga, the human condition gradually declines. From the golden age of the first yuga, we become less wise, weaker physically and emotionally, more prone to violence and corruption. The Kali Yuga ends with the destruction of the world brought about by Vishnu's final incarnation as the god Kalkin. Now, Vishnu is considered a supreme being who creates, protects, and transforms the universe. He is said to enter our worldly realm through different incarnations in order to restore order and preserve Dharma, which roughly translates as righteousness. But by the end of the Kali Yuga, things are prophesied to become so bad that humanity will need a reset. Vishnu will descend as Kalkin, riding a white horse and holding a sword, and destroy everyone and everything, save the last few who have managed to preserve their dharma. The exact date of Kalkin's wrath is a bit cloudy, though. Conventional interpretations of the Puranas set the end of the Kali Yuga around 429,000 AD. So maybe we have enough time to make our dharma right and save the world. Other interpretations say the Kali Yuga has already come and gone, though. So. Who knows? Either way, this is only a reset, and the cycle will continue into another Mahayuga, back into the golden age of the first Satya Yuga. Good for the universe for sure, but bad for most people. The Vikings In Norse mythology, the apocalypse follows a more linear path. The Vikings called the end of the world Ragnarok, Norse for Doom of the Gods. Because even the gods will die in this end of time scenario. Three harsh winters will portend a final chaotic collapse, where the war and bloodshed consume the world. Then, the god Loki will descend upon the earth in a ship of the dead, wolves will eat the moon and the sun, the stars will disappear, and earthquakes and tidal waves will pummel the earth. Most of the gods die fighting giants and the undead who have risen from the underworld, and finally the earth sinks into the sea. All is not lost, however. A new age dawns as the earth rises anew from the sea. There are a few gods still alive, and a man and a woman named Lif and Lifthrasir have survived, after hiding in Yggdrasil, a tree that connects the nine worlds of Norse mythology. They go on to repopulate the world, much like the biblical story of Adam and Eve. So when is this all set to happen? Well, according to the experts at the Jorvik Viking Center in York, England, it was supposed to end on February 22, 2014 after supposedly hearing the sound of an ancient horn warning that Ragnarok was on its way. Some recalculations may be necessary. The Apocalypse of Peter We did just mention the Bible, so let's dive into the Biblical Apocalypse. It's a popular one for sure. Most people in the West have probably heard about the Second Coming of Christ at some point. This is told in the Book of Revelation at the end of the New Testament written by the Apostle John. There is also an Old Testament version written by a prophet named Daniel. In both versions, Jesus lifts all those who are worthy up into heaven in an event known as the Rapture. Then an Antichrist descends to earth to battle it out with Jesus. The Battle of Armageddon ends with Jesus defeating the Antichrist and restoring the world to a pure, uncorrupted state. 
All sorts of theories and dates for Armageddon have been floated out there over the years, and it would take a whole other video to get into these. But one interesting thing to note here is how the apocalypse story was folded into Greek and Jewish mythology, possibly so certain empires could convert pagans into Christians. The Apocalypse of Peter is an obscure text, though it was widely read during early Christianity and was almost added to the New Testament. Written around 100 AD, it has two versions, one in Greek and one in Ethiopic. In the Greek version, the world is destroyed by an angel named Uriel, who opens the gates of the underworld and releases the Greek titans and biblical giants. God, Jesus, angels, Moses, Abraham, and other Hebrew patriarchs then come down to earth in a judgment day, rewarding the faithful and punishing the wicked. This hybrid-style mashup of mythologies certainly sounds like a good recipe for attracting followers, or at least for striking fear of the wrath of God into the hearts of as many people as possible. The Iranians The history of Iran is long, very long. It is one of the oldest continuously inhabited civilizations, with settlements dating back more than 7,000 years. Iran is certainly a Muslim country today, but that wasn't always the case. Zoroastrianism was the state religion of empires in Iran for over a thousand years, from 600 BC until the Islamic conquest of Persia in 650 AD. Powerful civilizations like the Achaemenid, Parthian, and Sasanian empires all adopted the faith. Like Iran, Zoroastrianism is very old. It is one of the oldest organized religions still practiced today, with roots going back to 2000 BC. It is also the world's oldest monotheistic religion, although it incorporates elements of dualism. Many later religions can trace their roots back to it. Based on the teachings of the prophet Zoroaster, Zoroastrians believe in a supreme being called Ahura Mazda. Much of the faith focuses on the dualistic fight between good and evil, and so it's no surprise that there is an apocalyptic judgment day folded into the fabric of this religion too. The Zoroastrian apocalypse is called Frasha Kereti or the final renovation of the universe. With evil far outpacing goodness, Ahura Mazda's sun, fire, will flow through the universe, destroying everything and separating good from evil. Then a Jesus-like savior named Saushiant will resurrect the bodies of those who are good, ushering in a new golden age. So. Are we doomed? Will we be able to avert the end of the world, or will we suffer the calamities predicted in some of these ancient stories? Humans have been fascinated and horrified by the possibility of collapse for as long as we've been around. Maybe there's beauty in being aware that things could end, and maybe learning the lessons within some of these stories can help us build a better world.